And we are recording. Do I want to be looking at you or the camera? Yes. <laughs> uh, it, but it, how about probably the camera, right? Because I was say, I'd rather have a conversation with a human than a lens, but you tell me what to do. What I meant was you should talk to me. Okay, right, okay, fine. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what I want. Uh, introduce yourself real quick. Uh, hi, uh, I am Ben Morse. Um, I made the film that's showing tonight. Yes, brilliant, and I can't wait to see it. I have heard nothing but great things. Uh, where did this idea come from? Um, I was thinking with my mouth open while recording uh, some demo footage for what was going to be album six, I think back in August of 2014, um, and said to Frank that someone should be documenting that album cycle because I thought it was going to be a very important one. Um, and he said, yes, that sounds like a good plan. Email management. And I did. And then two weeks later, got an email back saying, how much do you want to do this? And I went, oh, OK, we're making a film. Right. Uh, and it still went from there. Cool. So you didn't have to talk him into it? it <laughs> uh, I mean, it wasn't like one of those things where you're crazy? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, we've worked together for nine years, eight, yeah. nine years, something like that. I think, yeah, the thing with Ben was on tour with us anyway. So yes, it was sorry. just easy. It almost yeah. was like a, a natural progression. Uh, yeah. Yes, that works. Um, and in fact, we bought a, a for the time quite fancy movie camera that Frank will happily tell you he didn't realize was a movie camera. It looked the same <laughs> as his stills camera. So, yeah. so as far as they were concerned, I was just sort of hunched in different corners filming the whole time. Um, and they, got, they went about the business. And it was just you? It was just me, the yeah. whole thing. I mean, we've got footage in there that we've... Uh, there were a few shows along the way that were sort of taped for broadcast. So we did a, we did a material swap for a show uh, on PBS, which was great because they brought a whole crew in and had like a 12 camera setup for one of the shows, which is which is really nice. Uh, but otherwise, it is purely my work. Nice. And so, how much footage do you did you actually have for this? Um, we worked out we had about 100 hours worth of footage, which sounds a lot. It is a lot, but in terms of constructing a feature length documentary. It's not as much as I would have liked. Uh, very heavy on interview stuff. Because of the year that we had, not as much live stuff as I would have liked. Um, and because it's only me every time, that kind of limits what I can get from each show. Um, a bit, we, you know, yeah, because you're one person, you can only be one place, obviously. Um, but no, so I turfed all that over to my lovely editor, Jonah, and he, he sort of went, how much is there? And I went, uh, sort of four terabytes worth of footage. Um, and he, he emailed me two days later saying, don't come anywhere near the edit suite for six weeks. I need to watch everything, learn it all. Um, and we sort of went from there. So he edited first? No. Kind of? No, no, no. no. What he had to do. Oh, he cataloged. He cataloged, yeah, he yeah. watched everything, and he kept a handwritten volume of every interview that I'd done over the year um, with fans, friends, family, everything. He wrote out everything that everybody said, which wow, I thought was insane. Brilliant. But that's, that's how he worked through it. Yeah, yeah. I, my memory works very differently, and because I'd lived it, I could kind of skip to the bits that we needed for it. But no, we assembled the edit and the story together. So then you are not anywhere close for a couple months. You come into the edit room and you st and you start editing? Uh, yes. Now, um, you had a vision. Once you started editing, did that change your vision? Hey. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it's not a problem. Um, <laughs> So, no, I knew, I knew what the story was going to be. I actually gave him um, an outline edit. I gave him a skeleton edit on paper. I did, working with an editor uh, is a symbiotic relationship. You have to kind of find your shorthand and work out how you're doing it, much, I think, as you do with a, a producer in the studio. Yeah. Um, and I kind of said, this is where I want to go with it. If you've suddenly got big ideas that are offshoots or related to this or something that I've missed that you see and you go, oh, that should be in there, let's have that discussion. Um, and that's why the first cut took four months. Sure. And was there something that you had to leave off that in your heart of hearts knew it just didn't match the arc, but man, you loved that uh, scene or interview or comment? <laughs> Frank was incredibly generous about uh, what could be in there. Yeah. Um, I shot for everything I wanted to put it. I self-edited and took some things out that I didn't think were particularly fair. Yeah. Um, and but I left a lot of stuff in there, and Frank let it all fly. The only thing we had to remove 
was a very drunk uh, middle of the night rendition uh, of a Towns Van Zandt song because the Towns Van Zandt estate wanted a large amount of money <laughs> for it to be in the film. Yes, too much. Far, far right. too much. They wanted more than the film cost to make for it to be in the wow. in budget, which, uh, which yeah, that, made it an easy cut. Yeah, I get, yeah, you don't have to think very hard about that one. No, but otherwise, content-wise, everything that's in there, I wanted in there is in there. Cool. Uh, was there uh, any serendipity during filming, like something that just spontaneously happened that... Yeah, Frank had a terrible year. It was great. <laughs> uh... <laughs> like Wilco breaking up before the documentary came up. I don't know if you're familiar with I Want to Break Your Heart, but... Uh, yes. Yeah. They, they were filming about the album and then they basically fell apart and the album... Uh, Got, basically got cancelled and no one wanted to buy it and so it became a fantastic documentary because of something that wasn't planned. Um, I don't know, did anything serendipitous happen? I, um, I don't know, you tell me. I just, I just, <laughs> just, you just on lived it. Life. Um, we, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's, it's a documentary about a year where um, someone who is used to running at 100 miles an hour has to go back to walking, yeah. Um, and that's 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 a very frustrating thing for the subject, um, and it's a weird thing to document because it's the inverse of what you would expect. So in slowing everything down and looking at what doesn't happen, that became our movie. Now whether that's serendipitous or whether that makes the movie terrible, I, <laughs> you tell me. But it is at least different to a lot of the documentaries that are happening at the moment. Anything different from what we'd expected? I think that it ended up being. That's the opening of the film, is explaining about how, what, because it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was sort of originally, it was a film about the guy who never stopped, and then I stopped. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in that regard, that is serendipitous? I don't know. Sure. Yeah. 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 And when was the first time you saw the finished product? Or did you have any <clears throat> edit? Um, or were you ben, just like, take it, Ben, and I trust you? Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, yeah. Ben sent me kind of an early draft that was mainly interview footage to see if there was anything that I was uncomfortable with and wanted to take out. And I mean, you know, the short answer was that there was quite a lot I was uncomfortable with because it was an uncomfortable year in my life. But it also, before I'd seen that, while we were filming, I'd sort of made a decision internally that there was no point in us doing this if I was going to exercise editorial control. Um, you know, there's documentaries that get made that are just sort of hour and a half long adverts, you know, for the band. And I just think that's kind of, it's a waste of everybody's time. I didn't really want to, you know, I didn't want to be involved in a project like that. So, um, yeah, that first edit, I did, it wasn't much fun to watch. Um, I can only imagine. I'm yeah. so glad yeah. it wasn't. In the <laughs> yeah, I mean, I yeah, it was quite sort of ugh, for me. But um, but yeah, I said to Ben, do what you feel, do what you need, which was very very generous. Yeah. Um, I there's there's stuff in there that you will that you will see tonight that I thought was definitely a red flag that that either Frank or management would go that's not going in there find another way to say that yeah um, but no I was I was allowed to do it my way and like I said there there were a few things that ended up on camera that I didn't want in the film because I have to tread a line between being fair to somebody who is a dear friend and creating something that is worthwhile so. Um, in as much as this has been out in the world for a little bit, and the, it's the, the only sort of valid criticism I've read about it is that um, they that some people have said they'd have preferred to have seen some of the excess rather than just talking about it. But that wasn't really my interest. I would rather find out why somebody wanted to do that than just sure. show it and go, "Look how glamorous it is." Which, to Frank's point, is what every music documentary seems to do. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what's next? Something non-music or...? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I've written a script that I'm shopping around at the moment. Um, I'm talking about a couple of other documentary projects, uh, some work with a couple of other bands that I'm quite excited about, um, but nothing that I can really talk about at this stage. Good. Because this isn't an interview, you wouldn't want to talk about that. That would, be, <laughs> that would just be silly. Sorry. Uh, no, that's all right. Uh, since this is a film, first movie that you saw, like in a theater, oh you remember? Oh my god. Oh. Or one of the first. I mean, it doesn't have to be the first. Oh, do, in a movie remember? theater, probably yeah. E.T. 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 Um, I seem to remember my parents taking me to see a James Bond movie. I'm going to go Living Daylights, maybe one of the one of the Timothy Dalton ones when I was about six. Nice. But I've always, you know, I've I've loved cinema since 
I can remember. Okay. Um, and it's a massive kick to be able to walk into downtown Manhattan and see that a film I've made is sold out yeah. on a marquee. So I can only imagine. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, one more. Uh, we'll go with, you just said you're a fan of cinema. If you could remake any movie, Jesus, what would you remake? Well, that's a massive insult to whoever I'm, <laughs> whoever I'm saying that. I've, what, okay, I will preface this by saying that what I have learned from making my first film is that money and time, to me, are equitable investments. They are worth the same amount of, of, of effort. Uh, and so whenever a movie turns up, you go, oh man, ooh, why did that get made? Somebody still invested hundreds of hours into making it happen. Um, if I was allowed to remake any movie now, Gremlins. Gremlins. Gremlins, oh. Gremlins in that it's such a simple conceit. The original is fantastic, yeah. but you can reboot or extend that idea. And I, I love Gremlins. Wow. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Appreciate it.